Uh, often we see a lot of nutrients in the um, litter. So the, somehow in, in between the mouth of the chicken and, and coming out, something is not going well, uh, which often makes us think that it's an over-engineering, but also it could be that the nutrient is not being absorbed. In poultry production, we are all looking for optimum nutrient digestibility and performance. And enzymes play an essential role in that. But what enzyme solution works best? That is what we are going to explore in this episode of Future Feed Talks. I am Fabian Brockter, Editor-in-Chief of Poultry World, and this series is in cooperation with DSM Fermanic Animal Health and Nutrition. In the hot seat today is Santiago Ramirez. He is manager of Global Broiler Solutions Animal Nutrition and Health at DSM Fermilic. Well, welcome uh, Santiago to uh, this episode of Future Feed Talks. Uh, today we're going to talk about enzymes, uh, one of your specializations. Correct. Thank you for having me. Be good. Um, when it uh, comes to raw materials, uh, the nutrient values are more or less all over the place, uh, far from predictable. And how does it impact digestibility? The raw materials nowadays, I think, are evolving with uh, climate change, with different countries' exportations. They do carry different nutrient values. And I think more than just affecting digestibility, it's affecting the uh, overall nutrient, real nutrient value from the diet. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first thing that we need to get right is what is the sum of the nutrients of each raw material that are impacting in my final diet. And, and do you see, with the current challenges in the feed market, do you see more problems or quality problems in, in raw materials? Absolutely. Um, around the world we um, do mycotoxin surveys, we also do surveys on the nutrient values and we are seeing quite a lot of changes, specifically when it comes to main raw materials like corn uh, or wheat. Uh, we're seeing the impact in climate change in the fiber component of those raw materials, which intrinsically affect digestibility. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean uh, specifically? When the grain is being challenged by climatic conditions, the, di the fibers inside of the grain uh, change and often makes the grain less accessible to the poultry. And of course, and the same goes for, for mycotoxins. When you have more climate issues, mycotoxins are more pre prevalent? Yeah, that's correct. So often they come hand in hand and it's something that uh, that you must take into consideration because it will have a biological effect uh, on the bird, which also affects the digestibility of that raw material. And in your daily practice, do you see a lot of problems with mycotoxins in birds? Uh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. It obviously changes uh, in seasons. It changes in different regions. Some regions have no problems. Some regions have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And of course, today we are talking about enzymes, so the fiber digestibility is, is, is more important in this talk than the mycotoxins. Uh, how does uh, DSM Fermanic tune into that uh, to, to match the nut nutritional needs of the birds, so unlocking uh, uh, the nutrients? So the first thing that we would like to work with our customers is understanding the nutrient value of that raw material. Um, and extending of the fiber also with the phytic acid and also the protein content. So what is the amino acid digestibility? And again, uh, the sum of all of those digestibilities, I think it's what's important for the customer because we want for the customer to get it right mm -hmm. and be accurate with the, the values that they are assigning into their diet, be accurate with the nutritional uh, value of the diet for that poultry and in order to not waste in that uh, investment which is the feed. Mm -hmm. And what do you see in day-to-day in -day practice? Is, is it more or less uh, 
over-engineering the feed or, or having uh, less uh, protein in that? Yeah, it, it, I think it's a great question. <clears throat> what we do see is that uh, often we see a lot of nutrients in the um, litter. So the, somehow in, in between the mouth of the chicken and, and coming out, something is not going well, uh, which often makes us think that it's an over-engineering, but also it could be that the nutrient is not being absorbed. So it, it is a difficult question and it's something that uh, needs to be worked with the customer to understand where this is coming from. Because having too much uh, nutrients in the feed is, is actually, well, it's, it's wasting money, isn't it? Correct. It's wasting money. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, impacting the environmental footprint. It's also uh, serving as a nutrient for bacteria that could be detrimental and overall is not a good practice. And, and how could you step into that as, as being DSM family? So we like to work with our customers to understand what the quality of that raw material is. Uh, we would like to tailor made uh, recommendations on enzyme use, um, not only what enzyme to apply, but how much of it. Mm -hmm. And um, we do a series of tests, uh, both in vitro and in vivo if necessary, in order to get it right. And that's, that's on farm or in the feed mill? Uh, both, we, we work all across the, the, um, the value chain. Mm -hmm. So it could be um, on feed millers, it could be on home mixers, it could be on integrators, and, uh, and we tend to also work with R&D departments on, on this. Obviously, um, if you can save uh, the addition of several liters of oil into your diet, mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine that you can save quite a lot of money, um, and especially if you can improve performance as well. Uh, that, that, that would be a double win. So, so when, when it is, is adding an enzyme a well, one-size-fits-all approach? I think the market has evolved now. I think that, um, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we used to uh, use static values for the enzyme uh, uplifts, so to speak. But uh, now we're moving into dynamic values, and, and this is where the accuracy comes from. So um, you might have a certain uh, access to, to corn. Uh, I might have another access to another corn. And obviously, that raw material has a difference. And we can work with you to put the right amount of enzyme to, to get it probably more accurate. So it's a tailor-made approach. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and how would you select? or your customer would select a D right enzyme? I would say it is a, it's a process. I, I, I wouldn't say that it's, uh, it's quite easy to do, um, to, to get it absolutely right. And it's, nowadays we are seeing that it's more a, a, a two-way kind of uh, avenue rather than us just dictating uh, what the customer uh, should use. We also get uh, feedback from from him or her mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, what can work and what doesn't work. Obviously, um, <clears throat> some customers, their diet changes quite a lot. So um, in that case, we will select an enzyme that is more flexible. Um, other customers are using more basic diets, so we can use a more uh, powerful and, and straight enzyme, if you like. So, so in your advice to a customer, you need a well, not a day-to-day -day update, but you need a regular update from what they are actually feeding. Yeah, that's correct. And, and we see that most customers these days have uh, access to NIR machines or wet chemistry that can feed back uh, to us mm -hmm. uh, as to what are their changes. And uh, yeah, we, we adapt with that. And is there like a reference database within DSM Firmenich to, to, to match the, the results you get back from the the, the, uh, the yeah, business? yeah, that, I mean, uh, that's a great question. Um, there is maybe you know, fifteen to twenty years of research, uh, from all the way to small in vivo trials to in vitro trials to customer evaluations, and we do have a very large database where we can um, 
feed their data into that and then you know calibrate mm -hmm. accordingly. Um, even outlayers, we can you know tend to tend to have references for. All right. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and provide just because it's such an extensive database. Yes, exactly. And I think the advantage that DSM Feminic has is that uh, we operate all over the world, um, South America, USA, China, and Eastern Europe. So we have access to the main grains and uh, and proteins from the world. Mm -hmm. You're not missing any raw materials there. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Uh, and when you have everything right on farm and in your feed mill, uh, what else uh, could you advise uh, your customers? Yeah, so um, it, I think it goes back to one of the other questions that you asked uh, um, at the beginning. And you can get everything right and you can feed that uh, diet to the animal, but a big component of it would be the digestion process. And um, with that, I think the gut health piece is very important. Um, not only having the gut working well with the structure of the feed, um, the, the physiological aspect of the bird, but also in the microbiome aspect, um, cellular damage, oxidation, inflammation, all of those aspects, I think, need to be taken to, into consideration for sure. So keeping the birth healthy, getting the best feed in, and hope for the best performance. That's right. With the right yeah, enzyme. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's poultry production for you. <laughs> you have to get many aspects right in order to, to get it right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Santiago, for explaining it, being here at Future Feed Talks. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching Future Feed Talks. Do you want to see more episodes or listen to our podcast? Please click on the link below.